I'm Spencer Muzik, and joining me now is lawyer-turned-game show writer Art Chung. He has produced and written for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Cash Cab, and the World Series of Pop Culture. Welcome, Art. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Thank you, Spencer. Well, and I should also mention that you're currently the puzzle guru on NPR's Ask Me Another. Tell us about that show. What's it about? Sure. This is a brand new show that NPR is putting out. Um, it's one of their first new shows in quite a while, uh, sort of like Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, and it's a weekly game show, variety show. It's like a combination of the best pub trivia you've ever been to, plus we have music, comedy, uh, celebrity guests. So it's it's a whole package of, of uh, different entertainment uh, things. And I'm one of the puzzle gurus that present puzzles on the air. Uh, we have a host who's a comedian, Ophira Eisenberg, and she's fantastic. Uh, and our musical uh, in-house musician, we call him, is Jonathan Colton, who uh, recently had some issues with uh, Fox Network. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, and it's kind of like game night at a friend's house, right? Exactly. It's um, We play word games, trivia games, and we try to do it with an entertaining twist. Um, we do a lot of rewriting uh, music to, uh, we write lyrics to funny songs. Um, and uh, for example, we did uh, a game about uh, We Will Rock You, the Queen song, and we changed the lyrics to be about famous rocks. And you had to answer, oh, that was Stonehenge, <laughs> you know. I know that sounds cool. And But your role in the show, though, you said you're the resident puzzle guru, but it's not just limited to that, is it? No, I'm one of the puzzle gurus who presents on the air. But behind the scenes, I'm also the puzzle editor, which means that I write a lot of the games. And I also edit uh, all the submissions. We have a huge uh, staff of, of writers that come up with these brilliant ideas. And you know, my job is to put them all together, balance out the music and the uh, comedy, and, and put the scripts together. So Art, I want to talk about your career path up mm -hmm. until this point because I find it incredibly interesting. But first, let me ask you, why did you go to law school? You went to NYU School of Law. Mm -hmm. Why law school, Art? Uh, you know, I think uh, I was a political science major in college, so that's it's not completely out of the yeah, know, the fancy, realm of possibilities. Right, yeah. that it was, but it was the path of least resistance at the time where, you know, graduating from college, I said, hmm, I don't know how I'm going to make a living, and law school is right there. So, uh, and I was certainly interested from an intellectual standpoint in going to law school, uh, and, it, I, and I had a great time. Is it true, though, that you wanted to be a Supreme Court justice when you were longer, <laughs> like so many of us did, right. actually? Well, right, when I was, you know, <laughs> nine, I believe, I, I thought I could, you know, put on the robes and, and you know, just make decisions like that, sure. But uh, I think that, uh, you know, in law school, you know, you learn a lot more about what the actual practice of law is like. And actually, surprisingly, even though I had a writing background, I, I really wasn't interested in litigation, uh, per se. It, it didn't, I think that I didn't particularly like arguing both sides of an issue and then saying, look, well, you know, let the courts decide. I, I kind of had my side that I wanted to, <laughs> to win at all times. So I didn't think I had a temperament for litigation. Mm -hmm. uh, so I found myself uh, in uh, corporate and real estate. Well, so it's clear, it's interesting that it wasn't so clear to you at an early age that you would end up in a career filled with puzzles. No, I mean, uh, I had really no idea even when I left the law that I was going to wind up <laughs> in a puzzle situation, although uh, I had been looking back through I had always been a writer. I had always worked on the school paper in college, in law school, um, and I remember looking through my fifth grade uh, newspaper, and I had written a trivia game, and I and oh, I wow. totally forgot about that. And I, I was, I remember thinking like, why was I writing a trivia game? I was nine, and but apparently, you know, I've always been interested in um, facts and and their relations, their connections, the sort of odd you know, interconnections between things. And I think that's what the best trivia is about. You know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, though, that that's what distinguishes you from one of our earlier guests, Will Shorts, the New York Times crossword mm -hmm. puzzle editor. He said that he had this depth of clarity about his passion for puzzle making at such an early age. But you, you're saying that you didn't share that experience. Uh, yeah, Will is fantastic. He was a guest on our show. And, you know, he's a genius. And he, he basically <laughs> invented, you know, a whole bunch of games. I I think I came about it sort of serendipitously, but it was it's still something that I've if you look back on it, you can you can say like, oh, I was always interested in puzzles. You know, I loved reading. Uh, you know, I love doing crossword puzzles and things like that. Um, love playing Trivial Pursuit. I would just read the back of the cards. So, you know, I think that as the opportunities came up, uh, it was uh, something that I found, hey, I have both an interest and an aptitude in doing. Did you even discover while you were at Simpson Thatcher, which is where you worked after law school, that you wanted to be a great game show writer? <laughs> no, I don't think. <laughs> I think very few people want to become a game show writer. Hopefully this video will inspire millions. But um, I think that being a Simpson Thatcher, I, I realized that I really wanted to write more. How did you build the courage, though, to leave the firm? I mean, I think many people get paralyzed with fear when they come when it comes time to make the leap that you did. 
Right. I mean, I think that lawyers are, are particularly a risk averse a lot. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, partly because, well, you went to law school, so you weren't really taking a big chance by going to law school. But and also, you know, in law school and practicing, you hear about all the, you know, horrible things that can happen, or you're always supposed to think about the worst case scenarios. And so I think you're sort of um, prevented from looking at the upside of things and taking chances. And I think that, you know, I, I had an excellent time at Simpson Thatcher. It was a great firm, but I realized pretty early on that it really wasn't, for me, the practice of corporate law, especially in a big city. Um, and at that point, it was just a matter of when. And I think there was always the issue of like paying off student loans and and how am I going to make a go of it? But I felt that the longer I stayed, the harder it would be to leave. You know, there's the sort of golden handcuffs issue. Um, was it an abrupt departure then? Uh, I think the partner I told probably was that. But so. <laughs> <laughs> um, in but my you mind, had been it planning it for a while then. I had been planning it probably for uh, three to six months, probably uh, thinking about it for a long time. I was only at Simpson Thatcher for about 15 months. Okay. Um, and uh, I think there was that line about uh, becoming partner at a law firm is like winning a pie eating contest <laughs> where the prize is more pie. And I looked into the future and I thought, oh, I do not like pie. So, you know, I figured I just should cut cut my losses or, you know. But you know. Were, the, were you at all concerned, though, about making ends meet or play, paying the bills as a writer? Uh, absolutely. I, I You know, when I left Simpson Thatcher, I took something like an over 50 percent pay cut. I moved out of the apartment. I was living in with a law school friend and moved into a smaller apartment. I definitely um, took those steps, you know, to make sure that I had enough to, to live on for a while. And but, you know, I was much younger and, you know, uh, had was optimistic that I could find something. Well, and you didn't go long without getting another job. You started soon thereafter. At Who wants to be a millionaire? Were you there at the very beginning of the show? I can't remember when it started. The show had premiered uh, in the summer of 1999. Uh, and that was done in Los Angeles with Regis Philbin. Um, and at some point they knew that the show would probably go on for a little bit further. They wanted to bring it back. So they sent out a, a call uh, in New York because Regis didn't want to do it again in Los Angeles uh, for looking for writers. And, and, and you know, to my advantage, there were no long-term game show writers living in New York. <laughs> there just wasn't uh, an industry that was existing. So anybody could apply. And I applied. And I was fortunate enough to be one of the first writers on the primetime show. Um, uh, and the funny thing is when I signed on, they said the contract was for five weeks and I wound up working there for almost 10 years. Wow. And like almost 10 years, you left just very recently. Was it last year that you left or? Uh, yes, I, I left once and came back. Um, but, you know, I've worked on a number of different shows that you mentioned, uh, Cash Cab, uh, World Series of Pop Culture. So, you know, if if there's been a game show in New York City, I've probably worked on it or known someone who's worked on it. Um, but I left uh, just last year to, to work on this NPR show. And what did you learn from your experience there since you'd been there for so long? Um, that lawyers like to be on television. <laughs> that they really, uh, we had so many contestants who were lawyers, um, and I think it's because we... we Isn't that lawyers like to be on television or they think they know the answer to all oh, the trivia absolutely. questions? They both know a lot of trivia and they also want to show the world they know a lot of trivia. So uh, it's a combination. Well, and so as you mentioned, you've written for a lot of different shows, more than I could even mention in the intro. So aside from Millionaire and the current show, Ask Me Another, uh, do you have a favorite? Um, that's a good question. I really enjoyed uh, World Series of Pop Culture because pop culture is, is such a font of things to talk about, you know, and I think that that uh, is pretty prevalent in today's internet uh, culture where, you know, we have all these memes about uh, that just sort of pop up and it's, it's, uh, it's just a lot of fun. Um, and I also worked on a show called Stump the Schwab, which mm -hmm. was a uh, sports show. Um, and uh, the sports trivia nerds are even uh, their own subset of... of uh, <laughs> Of, of trivia nerds. They, they are so hardcore that there were so many contestants who would come on the show, fly, pay to fly themselves on the show, and we would tell them, you know you're not going to win the amount of money that it costs you to get here, right? And he's like, no, no, no. I want to be on this show. I want to prove that I know more than Howie Schwab about sports. But uh, it was a brilliant show. Well, so has you, have you used your legal background and training along the way, along your journey? Well, absolutely, in terms of both uh, just legal writing, being able to write clearly and to think clearly, and also specifically in trivia, you wind up getting into arguments uh, which have a very legalistic flavor. Uh, for example, um, 
you can write the question, you know, what's the tallest building west of the Mississippi? And then you find yourself in a discussion, well, what's a building? Is, it, <laughs> is, is a radio antenna a building? No. Is an observation tower where people can stand? Is that a building? And, and all of a sudden, you're, you're arguing about these things. And so having a legal training really helps sort of cut through the issues and, and come to an answer. And, yeah, I was going to say, are, uh, so what's your uh, advice that you would have to other lawyers or even just other folks who are interested in becoming writers or specifically a game show writer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, uh, I don't know about game show writing. I think you should uh, just keep writing. I think that's the best advice. I, when I was in law school, I spent a, l a lot of time writing both for the school paper but also for Time Out New York, which was allowing freelancers at the time. And I just was able to build up a portfolio of, of clips that when I was ready to leave, I had to show uh, other people. Um, I think these days you could just have a blog and you know write about something you're passionate about and, and find your way from there. Um, and also, I think just take a take a chance. You know, I mean, uh, like I said, I think lawyers are too risk averse sometimes, and and they're too eager to see the downside. But there's never a good time to 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 make the jump. Just have a go at it. Just go for it. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We're glad that you went for it. So thank you for joining us today to tell us about your story. Thanks, Spencer. For more information on this or other topics, subscribe to BloombergLaw.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody.